I'm Matt Bronger. This might help. I am not a doctor. This might help. I'm not a professional. Let's have fun. This honestly is a good time. Honestly, I got no idea what I'm doing. What's going on? Who are you? I'm Matt Bronger. This might help. The podcast. Hey, welcome to This Might Help, uh, the advice podcast that leans on the comedy. If you need clinical help, please get it. I use it. It helps. I have a therapist. Talk to him a couple times a month. Evens me out. Check under the hood is what I'm saying. This is for fun. Okay, this is for a good time. You know, like I always say, it's kind of like, um, you know, a guy hands you a weird pill at a party in the 60s and he's like, hey, this might help. I don't know. It's kind of like that. <laughs> Except it hopefully won't lead to anything uh, terrible. Uh, with me today is a guy who, I know it's weird to say you look up to people and stuff, but I figure we've got a couple years left on this strange blue rock, so why not give it up a little? Uh, Rick Overton's with me, who is not only a teacher, he's an improviser and a comedian, and has been for, for some time. He's a contemporary with uh, some people you might have heard of if you haven't heard of him, but those people that you look up to uh, look up to him. So with uh, that uh, nice. level wow. of buildup, wow. um, take it away, asshole. No, Rick, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Matt, for having me on the show. I really appreciate it, man. Of course, man. I just I, think... I see, bro. Oh, my. No, you, you're, 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 kind of, that. <laughs> you're, you're perfect for this show because I remember the last couple of times I've seen you in your... You're 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 always cracking me up, but also like you you have a kind of savage optimism, which I really dig and respect, you know. And and it's 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 just you know I know you've been through a lot and uh, lost some very good friends, and it's it's you know I, I remember seeing you do a, you were doing a bit about like oh you should just laugh at death, and I was just like wow. <laughs> Don't like, you know how comics process stuff? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You're right. As like some people, they say there's a place you need to file it in your head and put it or, or get it out. And you, you do this ritual where you burn a piece of paper like that makes it right. Does go back in your dreams at night, you know, uh, the oversimplification of the psyche. Mm -hmm. for the simple, uh, this pill fixes that problem kind yeah. of a what we yeah. live in. Sure, sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I just find the comedy is kind of uh, spectral and how it goes out into all the different things it could. Right. It, it could find its interpretation in it's because it is, a, it's all an improv, right? That's yeah. an improv. So uh, certainly in, in our no hand reaching out culture. Yeah. The people <laughs> in us, your hand's got some cash in it. I'll help you if you got cash. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's what's in it for me? You know, yeah. and that's the message that imprints in everybody's head. Well, yeah. the authorities treat it that way. I guess I should look at it that way. Absolutely, yeah. And 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 uh, the the more the more the authorities turn towards the worship of the self, you know, the more it's kind of the, like, no, 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 no. I mean, I want to help those people out, but really what can I get and how can I get away with things? And that's accepted now. So great. You know, bingo. I think we just had a breakthrough. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I, I am in a, in a particularly weird area, literally because we're in a rental house and, uh, at that tail end of it, you're out on the open sea. I know you think it that my, my fleet of, 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 of your, ga your galleons, my galleons with Spanish doubloons. Yes, <laughs> we, uh, uh, we've had this, the, the smoke alarms go off in the middle of the night. And we have an 11 month old and it's just a dream. I tell you, oh, when your 11 month old smoking again, just, you know, like us and the kids, once those kids start, they start so young. Yeah. Man, I hate when they see an 11 month old smoking. No, start with language, honey. Get the language first. There's so many other ways to be cool. Let's be honest. <laughs> you yeah. Use words to be cool. <laughs> so I, anyway, like this is the one place in the house with no smoke alarm, and the electrician is here, and he's he's, a, you know, so I'm just, I'm in here, and this is the this is the, the modern age we live in. Where are you? What room are you in? The that's upstairs the, bathroom. So that's, that's the bathroom. Curtain. Well, that's the shower curtain. All right. <laughs> I'm sitting on a closed toilet. Closed toilet. You got, you got a good echoing tone there because you sound oh. so like. Uh, 
Good. Like you, you're uh, you're in the cool one of those Berlin nightclub caves where the Beatles were discovered, except painted completely the opposite color and yes. brightly lit. Yes. yes, and I, I don't have to play for twelve hours straight. Um, as yeah. they, as they did. So when you started out in comedy, uh, you started very young and you started as a partner. You're, you're, in, you're in two sets of partners. And then what was what was your moment where you were like, I, I got to do this alone? Because I, I started out doing improv and then I, you know, the, the only child in me uh, jumped on stage and started doing open mics by myself and was like, oh, well, nuts to this team crap, you know? <laughs> and of course I got, I stayed with it and got back into it and still love it, but you know, I, I, I definitely think of you as, a, as, a, as an improviser too, but oh, thanks. Yeah, a little bit more of a stand up. You know, how, how do you see yourself and, and what made you be like, I got to go alone? Oh, well, you know, part of it was uh, with the team. Uh, I was starting to find I was improvising more mm -hmm. and he wanted to stay with. We craft these finely honed pieces. He had a left brain way of looking at the final performance. Oh, Start playing around. Don't dick around once you get up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can in a jam session come up with stuff, but it's, uh, it goes to the notepad. It doesn't go, hey, we just keep flopping around once we're on stage. He was not confident in that process surviving the road or being on stage, you know? And certainly mm -hmm. in the wrong hands, he'd be absolutely right about that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I just felt like there's a way to do this. There's a way to keep it going. And finally with set list nice yeah the you best can, you can play stand up and improv together yeah but that wasn't happening when i was doing it with roger back then they didn't have that you would just sort of go up and you could free farm it you could do one of those sets you know jonathan was known for doing it and there were guys lenny schultz robin came up started doing there were people just playing yeah 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 it yeah. was a thing that people knew about. It wasn't a complete mystery by then. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I to finally pin it down to certain kinds of things that almost anyone can start to play and do with like set list. Mm -hmm. I think set list takes you to a place where you never would have had faith in going, I'm not going cold in front of that audience, but it might try this because I can blame some of it on you if it yeah. goes back. I can yeah. bounce back on you and then I don't have to eat the complete failure. So yes, I will try set list. Then they come back from doing set list and be like, oh, I yeah. can kind of do this. I had no idea. I don't need that blaming crap at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to put it on anybody. I want to put it back on me. I want to take the, all the credit for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think the, one of the great things, if those of you who don't know what set list is, it's an internationally done show by now that, Basically, you go on stage and you don't know what your your theme or your punchline or you know your thread is going to be, and you look behind you and a thing flashes on this on the on this on this the screen behind you, and it says an an insane word, you know, some sort of collaboration of a couple different words, and uh, it so it, it's it, it's like you you you're I wouldn't say you're without a net because you have a structure there, but it's also the the, the 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 momentary joy people get when a, a comic's on stage and they're doing something by rote and everyone's getting bored and the comic throws it away and goes you know what I don't I don't know if I can trust my wife and they're like oh something real is happening you know like one of those things I feel like that's what set list is beginning to end because it's just you're just shooting from the hip and the audience is a part of it with you so it's yeah. it's really great it's really great and uh you'd be surprised how many comics don't trust his wife. <laughs> Maureen is, 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 is a really shady it's lady. Deal. God, you know? is she staple. She's Maureen Stapleton. Yeah. Come on. Oh, I remember doing set list at Cobbs during, um, sketch fest. Sketch fest what year. Oh God. 20, 15 maybe i mean no may, no 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 maybe, maybe even like 13. Were um, we the night? what's that were we the same night i don't know proofs was there robin was there yeah uh 
And I, I, I remember it stood up my mind because I had a, I had a good one and I got off stage and Robin's in that little backstage area and he goes, seamless, and just jumps on stage past me. And I was just like, oh, I'll always have that. That's nice, you know? <laughs> seamless from Robin. Yeah. That's good, man. I know. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff, man. Yeah. That's, that's, that'll keep me going a while. That'll oh, keep yeah. Me going a while. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um, so what, what drives like your, 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 your enthusiasm, the optimism I was talking about before, what, what kind of gives you that? Is there, is there, is there something you learned along the way or is it just how you've always kind of been or am I not well, seeing the, the harsh it, darkness you're trying to portray? I don't know. I, <laughs> I have a survival mechanism. Mm -hmm. I want to, make it through this how come there are still people here after all the crap that's happened to the earth yep well, yep this conversation how did we get to this point mm -hmm. unless someone had to have this attitude yeah mm -hmm. it is a perpetuated species i don't necessarily I, i'm not perpetuating the human species but mm -hmm. i can perpetuate the philosophy as to why we live rather than just we are eating functionaries that then sleep and die and breed and that's it right right we're not food takers we're, we're supposed to do other stuff too and food yes. was supposed to be part of that journey mm -hmm. yep it's just fuel and so we mix up we mix our metaphors a lot with these things you know but i i think uh real life includes creativity real life includes that because that's kind of like your journey to through evolution that's your original design is evolution and improv and evolution are best friends. Yep. Yep. It's it's funny. I'm just, you know, there's always that line that, uh, you know, uh, improvisation is the soul of jazz. I think improvisation is the soul of evolution. You know? I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Random particles that then make sense later. Yeah. Uh, the butterfly effect. And you can see what kind of things have been made from those ripples. Yeah. 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 Uh, improvisers. Yeah get that verbal jazz thing right away but you know you, you, i try to remind people everywhere that you're all improvising you didn't mm -hmm. none of the first the conversations you're having now right yeah you, you 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 don't know what you're going to do next you know your intention right. you know your right. you know the effort you're about to put out you don't know what's going to happen you know right. yeah yeah and so i'm an improvangelist you know i, I try to put that <laughs> I try to put out the message to everybody that you don't even know you're doing it right now, but that's what you're doing. That's really true. I don't, I don't know if I'm I'm worshiping. I don't know if I call it the word worship, mm -hmm. but I'm giving some credit to the right brain and the gut. Yeah. They've yeah. saved every time and your conscious mind just photo snap recorded the moment and then took credit because it didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, nothing to do with it. It's yeah. digital recording. Yeah, I, I, I remember... I, when I was, a, I used to, I was, a, I started out as an actor in doing plays in high, in like middle, grade school, middle school, high school, college. And I remember in high school, early in high school, uh, I was in some French farce and like the, the buttons unsnapped on my pants and no one knew but me. And I'm holding my pants up with one hand. And there's a scene where this guy walks and he puts his hand out, like, let's shake hands. It's a deal. And that's the scene. Like the, the, it's the end of the act. And I'm just like, I just said, before we snake, my, uh, shake, my pants have become unsnapped. I must resnap them. And he waited and the audience cracked up and I took it and shook his hand and it shut. And it was that thing where they were like, wow, you saved it. And I was like, no, 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 no. I was just saving the moment. I didn't even think of what is the best thing to do. It's like, I can't let my pants fall and shake his hand, you know? And I, and I think that's, that's that we we forget how often we do that, that when people get on stage, they're like, well, I can't, I can't just make it up. And it's like, all you're doing is making it up all the time. You know, like you should even when you're doing your interpretation of Shakespeare, mm -hmm. the improv includes your voice, your tone, mm -hmm. your timing. Yep. There's yep. if you hold one performance to the, to the other, you can't say they're identical. No way. No way. The words are the same, but there's a whole different way it's metered out. You know, different musicians are playing these words now. 
Yeah, I, I had a I had a, a, a yoga instructor tell me once that you can make the same motion twice, just like I just did, and I just use different muscles both times. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fascinating. <laughs> you, you told me that, and my mind was blown for the whole day. He's like, it's it's like that app Waze. What's the one that shows you different ways to get to the same place? It's like that in your body. I was like, oh, that's crazy. Mm. You know, mm. there's that's there's there, Never thought of, of it. A lot of different directions. So I always ask uh, Rick on, on the show if, and I'm sure yours is a yes, but do you, first off, I don't know why I do advice podcasts. It's just fun. I like the, 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 the comfortable and not, you know, on anonymity and it, wait, what's the word? Anonymity. Thank you. Anonymity that people can call in and just share something. They don't say their name and I never know what's coming. My guest doesn't know. Only Renee, the producer, knows. He, he picks the calls for us. Um, but I never, you know, I get adv asked advice sometimes, but not a ton. Do you get asked advice? I think comics will check in with me sometimes about either, what, what do I do in the biz right now? <laughs> and I say, man, good, good luck, you know, uh, start a YouTube channel and things like that. The words I never thought would come out of my mouth earlier because I didn't have the info, but I'm you know, I'm really watching who is perpetuating their career now in a situation where all the old ways of doing it are kind of just falling away. You got to yeah. reinvent, stay in, you know, stay online, mm -hmm. keep yeah. an act viewing audience. And they go, yeah, but you're not getting paid for that. What would this have cost you for a publicist to do? Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 adaptation. It's, it's very hard. It's very hard for me. Uh, to to self promote, you know, online a lot. I was always kind of like, you know, cringy away from that. But it's like you have to, otherwise I hire someone to do it, and they probably won't do it as well as I could because they don't know me as well as I know me. You know, yeah. what I want to present, and it's that's a really the the PR line is a great line because I've hired PR people and it they do their best, but you're kind of like, what is my money getting me here? Yeah, I don't. This isn't. I could have called that paper, you know. And I, you know, there's some lovely PR people. Who yes. Have done fantastic things. Mm -hmm. but in between, there's this whole universe of everyone else who dreams and hangs on and feeds into the Las Vegas model where the house wins, but you're not seeing it back with your bucket of nickels, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, so <laughs> damn it. Half the bucket. Start. Gone. <laughs> Start the wagon. That's <laughs> it. So that said, are you ready for our first call? Let's try it. Okay, let's try it out. We're here to help. Yes. <laughs> hey, Matt, this is Rob from Nashville. Uh, just got my tickets. Excited to see you coming to Zanies in October. Um, got a question for you. I'll try to keep it as brief as possible, but uh, I know you always say you need to give you enough info, so... Uh, here we go. Uh, my wife and I met when we were in grad school in Atlanta. We were been married for about 10 years. Uh, we moved to Nashville about five years ago to be closer to my dad, who was not in the best health. Uh, he passed away actually last year, um, you know, after a long drawn out thing. But uh, in the last little bit, my wife has actually been talking to me about where she wants to move to North Carolina to be closer to her best friend. And uh and her husband and their family. Uh, we don't have any connection to North Carolina, to their town other than them. And um, we have a great friend group here in Nashville, uh, which includes my best friend who I've known since I was like three years old. And uh, basically it, I'm in that situation where it just feels like somebody here is gonna have to sacrifice something. Um, I, I love it here and I kind of want to stay in Nashville, but she really wants to move there and be closer to her best friend and family. Um, so I'm really not sure what to do here. Uh, any advice that you have would be greatly appreciated. Uh, thanks a lot, man. Bye. Well, Rick, when do you, why don't you take first crack? Well, if, you know, sometimes people go round for round. Yes. And she went, I went round one with your dad. Yeah go round two with my friends mm, wow. and you're 
think and the guy's thinking yeah but friends are not the same thing as a dad yeah and mm-hmm. she's going a move is just as traumatic for me as a move no matter where i move moving is like one of the three grand traumas all right <laughs> So if I'm going to give you a trauma, it doesn't have to be about a dad. It can be about anything. Mm-hmm. It's not my dad. It's yeah. your dad. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's the subconscious at work here going, yeah, well, where's the fairness here? Yeah. Where's the balance? I'm giving it all. I'm not seeing much back other than, oh, when it's your friends, we stay. Right. But so this, and this also might be partly a test. To say, well, what are you willing to give me back? And she's starting to figure out where this is headed because she'll use that as the model for how to view the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I just look. All my only advice to you is just you got you got to sit down and you you have to tell her exactly how you feel, like lay it all out so that it don't the amount of times in my life where I'm like, oh, I wish I would have said this or shared this. You know, because then it built a resentment for when I did move and then it came out after a few beers and I was screaming. You know, it's like you, you got to lay it all out and go, are you not happy in Nashville? Because I'm very happy. You have one friend there. We have several friends here. What is with this friend? Are you trying to build much more of a future with all of us there and like our kids? What What's what's the plan? You know, it just, I just don't see the thing in uprooting. Now I'm only talking from your perspective because I don't have hers, but I think, you know, Rick, Rick is absolutely correct. I think what you can do to start is just have a brass tax conversation to sit down and go, we just have to lay it all out exactly what we want because we're too old to not start planning. There's no kind of let's we're in, we're in college, man. You know what I think is cool? Ann Arbor. Let's go there. I got a bro. We can hang out there, sleep on a couch. Like you, you, you are adults now in adult relationships and you gotta, you know, if, 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 if this is, if this is her thing and she's like, I gotta go, I miss this person so much. It's murdering me or whatever it is. Sounds a little crazy. One friend, but at the same time, maybe you dig deeper and go, do you hate Nashville? You know, um, and are these excuses for another deeper dynamic that's really right. dividing the relationship altogether? That's too uncomfortable. The big elephant thing. That's the real reason that the couples love finding legitimate sounding excuses mm-hmm. to make it look when the story is retold without them being present, how they kind of came out not smelling so bad, you know? Yes, exactly. You, how many times have you seen that? Right. Oh yeah. No, it's not that. It's not that thing that, keeps me up at night no no it's this it's this little thing you know yeah, it's minutia. it's not this core elemental thing <laughs> yeah the, the, the thing the thing it's not the thing i'm most scared to talk about no right. be that <laughs> shadow what shadow i don't cast a shadow no yeah dude i think you just got to have a, a serious talk with, with her and say exactly how you feel but also ask her to just share everything she can because because you don't want to so I'm not saying, you know, if you want something, you got to fight for it, but you can argue in favor of it if that's how you really feel. And she can too. And just yeah, try to gotta have an open ear to listen when she says her side of, you know, I gave you so much. What are you going to give me now? Without gotta, a doubt. Part. You just gotta, you gotta respect it because mm-hmm. you he clearly got his own version of that dynamic. Yes, exactly. But like, like, Rick was saying, not in these words, but I think there's there's more to that iceberg than what she's showing you. Oh, yeah. And that's fine, but just talk about it. You know, it's honesty in a relationship is very important. So. Better to get to it than to, than to not get to it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It doesn't go away when you ignore it. Mm-hmm. And dude, thanks uh, for coming to the, the special taping in Nashville. That's October 3rd, for those of you wondering. Nashville, Tennessee at Zany's. So a um, little uh, shameless plug at the end of uh, life advice for you. But thank you for coming. Be sure to say hi. And, uh, you know, I'll say hi to your gal, too, if she's there. And your friend. And her friend. Have her fly in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> plug, plug, plug. All right. Ready for the next call? Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Hi. I am addicted to ketamine. 
I inject it into my veins. No, I don't do that. But I have had people done it to me. It's fucking awesome. But I do inject it in my muscle. And I don't know how to not ever want to do it again. Hmm. Like, I wouldn't say I'm addicted because I don't do it every day. I don't feel the need to do it every day. I don't even want to do it every day. But I genuinely don't think I'll ever not do it. Like, if I go to a fucking show or a festival or some shit, I'm going to do some fucking ketamine. Now, let's be real here. Is there, is there a way to get rid of that urge? Wow. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I, I do, I do average about one heavy one per show. And that's, <laughs> that, that's a, and a caller, honestly, man, thank you for, even for your sake, just to call and to say it out loud. Everything you just said took an, an incredible amount of, of, of bravery and uh, to be that honest, um, even with just yourself. Uh, Whew. So again, uh, I don't know to say exactly, except yeah. you know, meditation, hiking, and uh, perhaps ayahuasca, which is supposed to be the curative for every addiction on earth. But um, with a guided, with a guided journey, not on mm -hmm. your own, not at a party, nope. not brave. You go to yeah. a, you go to a real legitimate sh shamanically trained guide. Mm -hmm. and maybe do it that way that's what i hear i haven't gone there but that's what they're saying and so yeah. supposed to be turned clinically it's turned into a drug called ibocaine which mm -hmm. is the pharmaceutical version of ayahuasca not as not the same exact effect but supposed to help mm -hmm. and um I, you know i'm not i'm not well versed beyond that i know that uh, timothy leary was using it mm -hmm. when he was yeah. dying of cancer and he would join John Lilly, the inventor of the flotation tank. And the two of them were expressing that they were exiting their body to go look at where they're going to be relatively soon. Wow. And so they were getting a walking tour of their death and they could return to the body and take care of affairs here. Interesting. Good. And that's where they were putting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. The, so, the, you know, right. I think if you treat it, a thing like that that's kind of supposed to be used in a sacred way in a non-sacred way and it is not so good for you you know yeah. i that may be not the worst thing in the world for you it's just mm -hmm. that and also it's it's not treating it with the respect that it should be treated right as a sort i think the thing that stood out the most for me was the moment he said i don't see how, how i can uh i can see i can't see myself wanting to go to live without it or something like that. It wasn't that heavy, but it was just like almost this kind of, I can't see myself not wanting it, not wanting to do it. And I mean, that's anyone I've ever known who's, who's had, you know, a craving, a pull, strongest word would be an addiction. And I'm not saying you are addicted, but you did start out by saying, I've never had it in my veins. Wait, no, I've someone else has injected in my veins. I, I shoot it in the, into a muscle and I'm kind of like, dude, potato, potato. Um, I know ketamine. Is there. It's the way a brain works. With the attic brain is always looking for the maybe this, but then maybe not all in one cent. Right. And it jumps like a rabbit back and forth over the ditch, you know? Yeah. It's, and, it's the, uh, at least it, I'm not no, that guy. This it's guy. Not, it's not deliberate deception mm -hmm. uh, unless you consider that whatever part of the functioning attic brain is trying to manipulate the rest of it, the brain, the rest of the person, it is self-deception. So yeah. there's going on an absolute fealty and belief in that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, the sort of the artful dodger in the way everything is described, uh, ducking and dodging. And it's, it's, it's a prey behavior. Prey runs like that. It's always running and it's always, it's always tricking and trying to get away from being eaten. Yeah. 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 So you're living in the, in the amygdala, the prey mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I, I would just say, not that I, I'm, you know, a, a specialist in, in substance abuse and stuff, but I, I've always been a, a drinker and I've had to tone it way down as I've gotten older. But I, I found one thing that helped me was I used to think, I don't know why I would go on the road and not drink. I used to think that way. 
And I, 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 I still, I have, I have weekends where I'm just like, eh, I'm not going to. Because I took a weekend and went, why don't I just not? And instead I just hung out with comics and had better mornings every single day. I had better sets um, and I enjoyed myself. And it was kind of like, not that I was like, oh, I need alcohol to have fun, but it's like, you really don't. If you surround yourself with the right people and create the right activities and look at life the right way, rather than go, well, I have to have this to have this. You know, it's that old social ritual. You want to see, I want to have permission to go, I could throw my arm around you and you won't go, hey, what's the big deal, man? Why, why are you breaking these boundaries? And I can go, hey, I've had a couple of drinks. And go, okay. And they throw an arm around you. And everyone's singing a song. You never thought you'd sing a, lo a loud song somewhere. Oh, it's great. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you singing a song? What, are you crazy? Not if you're drunk. Nope, it's okay. These basic elemental things, unless you find another way to mm -hmm. have that sort of excuse to do it. And it has to be the way your brain's been conditioned your whole lifetime to see that excuse as having its place when it has yep. to pop open, you know? Yeah. So, like, dude, I would talk to your friends about it. Uh, think about the ayahuasca thing possibly because I've, 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 I've met several people that it's helped them just drop a thing. They just, I said like, I don't want this in my life anymore. I've heard that, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, but start with just trying not go to the concert, go to the movie, to the, you know, the party and, and not shoot K try it. it the thing is, it's like, you know, I, I started out in the Chicago scene. We were all drinkers. We'd all drink every single night. I know they, they, this your generation, you sound young. I meet young people all the time who are like, my thing's kind of ketamine. I don't know what it is, but that's just swept. It's just everywhere. And you're going to reach a point where you kind of go, uh, I got to do way less or none. And and think of ways to to to, to find joy outside of it. As much as that sounds, I know, fucking insane to you right now, probably. And I'm not being facetious. <laughs> so. It makes sense when I'm on ketamine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's listening to this on ketamine going, oh, fuck you, yeah. guy. Boy, special K. Special K. All right. Well, hope that helps, man. And thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Uh, Rick, you ready for call number three? Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Hey. Um, how, how do you get and stay motivated to do simple tasks? Um, because <laughs> I think that they're kind of lame and I don't really like to do them, but you know, we all got to do them. Yeah. Mm. Good one. Yeah. And I, I like, I like the, I like the, I like the delivery. The delivery was great. Just sounding mildly stoned and, and, uh, about everything. Or just exhausted. Yeah. Well said. Be stoned. Oh, it might just be, I have freaking had it, uh, with a job that requires this. Mm hmm. It's yeah. not volunteering for any of this and i'm not getting i'm not getting paid enough for this and they don't think it's worth any more so they don't think i'm worth any more and that's kind of bringing the tone of my voice down mm -hmm. yeah i'm just i'm just using conjecture here but that might be the right. dynamic that plays into it. i know other people when i see them go through that slumpy what's the use kind of thing how do i because i have a world where that still requires some basic maintenance that I have to do these things for, but I, if you're forced to do it at work and at home, it's that kind of thing. It just gets to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't, and it's so condescending to come up with a fun game. You can do come up with, think of a whistle, a tune, whistle, a tune when you're doing it. That's what I do. I, I make up a tune. You know, it's fun. Make up a song that involves the chore and sing it and try to make it rhyme. Now, <laughs> you're choking me. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure there's a great answer for this one. You, it's, you know what it, some of it is? Let it suck. Yeah. Let it be bad and just let it not destroy you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. give yourself those basic instructions 
through this weird time we're in. We're not going to have any perfect answers for anything. So let it be bad. Yeah. Yeah. Find an ironic way to joke about it later. That might be all you get. Yeah. Maybe that was an ironic joke. Mm hmm. I got look. Oh, right. And that was it. Mm hmm. And our and uh, the reward is we're still here talking about. It. That's correct. I uh, the only thing I would add, let it suck is the is the to me the eighty percent. The only twenty percent I will add is think of a treat you're going to give yourself later. You know, maybe it's uh, a nice coffee. Maybe it's uh, you're going to watch a movie you've been trying to watch on TV or something. Just something. Something you're like, I'm going to take this hour and a half and this will be mine and I'll have this. Think that's about your, That's your cell window of sunlight in your prison cell. That's it. <laughs> and when that beam of light and you watch the arc of light go across the floor, you know, to the end of the day and mm -hmm. you mark it on the wall and that's it, you know. And, and I, I'm, I won't give you pretend optimism because that's so insulting. No. Don't give it to me. Don't tell me, don't candy coat things for me. I'm a grown up. Yeah. And so, yeah, some of it just, it's just bad. And yeah. there's no fig. I've gotten through some rough stuff by just saying, well, this is fucking terrible out loud to myself. No one else in the room. Bad news, a terrible right. moment. Right. I, I've told this st story on the show before, but like when I was a PA, I was carrying sandwiches to a car and I realized I'd lost my keys. And the meter had run out and I just yelled, this is really awful. And I found the keys. Not that it passed a spell, but it was like, I needed to just have something to just tell myself, this is, there's, this is the worst. This is such the worst. When a comic is dying on stage and they do an ironic, well, I chose the wrong night to record my comedy special. Yeah. And the crowd laughs at that part. It's the acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. And everyone loves the acknowledgement of the real rather than the rehearsed. And so many of our days, we march through them rehearsed. So that's that improv thing again. We And we say, no, the conversations, yes. But a lot of what we do for rote, like that thing that's getting to that caller, the yes. rote of it, the repeat of it, mm -hmm. is getting to you. And yeah. that by improv gets you out of it. And so I wouldn't always say everyone needs to do improv. Or even treat everything like it's an improv. Right. But maybe you just like you say, this is really awful. You just say, I need an improv here somewhere. Uh-huh. Improv. And maybe just by launching that part, somehow the rusty the gears start to turn in that old machine again. Yes. You start shaking it free so you can get it to run cooperatively with the other half of your head. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Because d d distraction of the one thing that you're concentrating on too much and, and exacerbating is 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 a good thing. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Look, I think let's 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 try to let's do this last call. If you're ready for one more, and then we'll 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 plug some stuff, and and that'll be the show. Is that sound? Can we fit this last call in, Rick? Is that okay? Feeling like we're on a roll. I think so. Hot stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, so I'm wondering, is it okay for a, like, uh, you know, like a grown woman to, you know, like, still, like, believe in Santa Claus? Um, she's hot, but, uh, definitely believes in Santa Claus. Um, you anyway, know, I'm asking for a friend, so, yeah. Short and sweet, baby. Talk to you later. Man, I, I've said didn't see that coming on the show before, but not like I'm feeling right now. That, that was a, that was like a, on a on a on a country road driving slow, and then just took a hard left turn off a cliff. That call. Now, let's run his his call through the sincerometer to see how sincere he was about that. Uh, oh, a three. He gets a three. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if he has that girlfriend or not. Yeah. But let's answer it as though that were a sincere question. 
That's what we I do. All the funs in that half of town. Mm-hmm. Uh, a girlfriend who believes in Santa Claus. Um, I, I have to ask you how old this girlfriend is, man. Yeah. <laughs> we got to go to the age question because maybe we got another problem on our hands here. But mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't even want to go here. You take it. This is no. Oh, yeah. Look, this is a. This is a. a fun. Like, this, is, this, this is we either we either do a second podcast and extrapolate this thing all like another hour or we just succinctly go uh i'm not saying it's not okay for her to believe in that people believe in some crazy shit that has no malleability outside their own imaginations and collectively so but that's a little out of bounds uh, in terms of believing in this actual flying man originating in, in Germany, uh, who behind it, what's that? You know, the story behind, uh, reindeer and Santa Claus. Uh, I, well, I know, I know the Krampus thing and stuff, but well, deer, reindeer would eat a certain kind of fungus ah. that hallucinogenic, but only once having processed itself through their kidneys into urine they would urinate on the snow. The shaman would make snow cones and eat them and would hallucinate. And suddenly they saw flying reindeer with a bright red man at the controls. Is this for real? That's right. No, well, that's what the other legend is. And it's right that that's the other legend. Yes. So they, uh, you know, cause I, I wasn't there. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not 67 yet. Okay, hang on. I wasn't there. Come on. Yeah, uh, come on! Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm still young by George Burns standards, and uh, <laughs> or Dick Van Dyke, you know, right? And uh, which I'm go- I'm shooting for. I really I want a piece oh, of that, yeah. don't you? Oh, right. Mel Seems Brooks, so baby, come on! Am I, uh, you want uh, you and me want to be two old guys at a deli saying what I tell you? I'm, hell yeah! I will I will high five you and sprain my wrist. That sounds yeah, great. that's right. I'll, I'll bionically high five you. With I'm in. Augment. I'm in. Have, like. <laughs> Prometheus, but uh, I uh, yeah yeah. So the the Santa Claus myth is evidently uh, completely hallucinogen based. Then, caller, my only answer is tell this person, your girlfriend or your friend, asking for a friend. Part of me wonders if you're asking for you and calling yourself a she. Which, if that made you comfortable, good. But if you want to believe in this hallucinogenic generated uh who's hallucinogenically generated gift giver that flies into every <laughs> chimney around the world when only what 30 percent of all worldwide houses have chimneys probably less than that um sure uh in terms of it being okay it's nuts but oh sure it's okay great you or and, she- and i say no matter what though definitely leave one of your teeth under the pillow Right. Leave a leave a tooth under the pillow. Leave your shoes at the bottom of the stairs for gifts. Right, right. Don't forget that. Gotta do the cookies and milk. Cookies and milk. Yes. Uh, and and I and I believe it's also have your most uh, bovine or reindeer like friend eat hallucinogenic mushrooms and drink their pee. That's the that's the big one. That's the you have to drink their pee. Snow cone uh, method helps works best, but. I don't know if you're going to find uh, that Germanic snow. That yeah, we're not fussy about it, hot or cold. I don't think it makes any difference. You do you while you're <laughs> drinking deer pee. Drink deer pee. Yeah. <laughs> so on that note, those are the calls. Rick, thank you so much for being on the show. I, uh, it, I, I, time. I, it flew by way too fast. I, 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 I'm glad because this. I just want it to be fun. I want it to be... I always think of podcasts as you're hitchhiking into someone's life. You're like a fun hitchhiker as they're driving down the road of, of life yeah. and you're making them laugh. And you're like, this is my stop. Enjoy the rest of your ride. Um, is there anything you want to uh, plug that you've got coming up or going on right now? I have a comedy special out based on set list. Oh, fantastic. Oh, great. What is it it's called? Rick Overton's very first set list special. You can see it on Amazon Prime. Oh, Rick Overton's wow. very first set list special. We're hoping to make a bunch of them because the thing is about set list, if you do it, it's an hour. And uh, you, the thing about set list is you don't need to work two years of new material up and wait no. and then do I can just start rolling tomorrow and then the I next day. It. I love it. We knock special after special out on this. Oh, and so uh, check it out. Let me know what you thought. Drop me a note after you saw it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will definitely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out next week. I'll th- put it in my calendar. That sounds fantastic. Hell yeah, and dude! I just they're throwing the suggestions at me. I turn and go, and that's it. That's it. Off to the races. Uh, guys, check that out. And uh, yeah, thanks again, man. Let's do this again one day, huh? I will have you back. For, I would love to, man. And I, I would look forward to see you in the real world, not on. We'll have that too. Yeah, sounds good. All right, cool, man. man. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Matt. Talk Take soon. care, brother. You too, buddy. Well, that was fun. We talked about hallucinogenics, and I feel like I'm on them now. Uh, if you would like some advice from uh, uh, one of my crazy friends, guests, and or myself, call 323-763-0228. Again, that's 323-763-0228, and thanks. This Might Help with Matt Bronger was created and hosted by me, Matt Bronger. Produced by Outer Circle Media. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcasts.